Hello, Alex here, and today we're going to talk about Ilford's Ilfo Stop as an example of a developer stop bath and what you need to know about it in terms of safety, handling, and disposal. This video is kindly sponsored by the Photoshop.ie, who have provided this bottle of Ilfo Stop to me for the purposes of making this video as part of this educational video series. More about them later, but for now, let's get into it. First, a mandatory legal disclaimer and a quick overview of how the video is going to go. The opinions expressed within this video are my own opinions and do not constitute legal advice on my own behalf or the behalf of the Photoshop or its staff. If you have any serious concerns, consult your local council, city, board or other regulatory agency, but I will be happy to answer some simple questions in the comments down below, by Instagram or by email if you need any immediate kind of more casual help. Over the course of this video, as we go through safety, handling, disposal, and of course, cost, we'll give Ilfostop a rating out of three. Although this video is specifically about Ilford's Ilfostop stop bath, the details probably apply to pretty much any stop bath in existence, but we are specifically scoring this stop bath here because we may be covering a different one in future. Who knows? Before we get into the thick of it, we need to understand what a stop bath is and what it actually does for you in your own darkroom. Pretty much every developer that develops film is alkali or alkaline. It has a high pH of above 7. This is necessary for the developer to actually work and reduce silver halides onto your growing silver crystals in your emulsion during the development process. Stop bath is a weak acid solution which will neutralize that pH stopping the developer from proceeding any further. So that's broadly what it is, but why you would need it is so that you can precisely control when your development process is finished. This is particularly important if you're going for reproducible results, say you're working in a lab, you should be using some kind of a stop bath, or if you just want to, say you have a large number of rolls of the same type that you need to develop, such as for a project, you could use a stop bath to guarantee precise development time to ensure consistency from roll to roll and batch to batch of development. Additionally, stop bath can be very important when your actual development time is very short. For example, Kodak Tri-X in HCA 110 Dilution B is very short compared to my normal development times, which are in the 10 to 15 minute range. So 10 to 15 minutes, 20, 30 seconds is nothing. Four to five minutes, it's a lot bigger of a deal. You think of a, a C41 development process in a three to three and a half minute development, 30 seconds is a one stop push. So it can be very important to actually know precisely when your development ends so that you can figure out if you're troubleshooting or just for your own knowledge, if your film is overexposed, overdeveloped or underexposed and underdeveloped respectively. Although acid-based chemistry in general is extremely quick, Ilford do have recommended times that you should use for this stop bath. Honestly, it isn't mandatory to use stop bath and a lot of people don't bother. I personally don't unless I'm working in a kind of six minutes or shorter time frame. Again, like Tri-X and HC110 Dilution B. But then again, it's so cheap, which we'll get to, and economical long term, that there's really no reason not to. Of course, if the price is too much for you or you simply just don't want to spend the money, you can get by without a stop bath by using rapid and thorough washes over and over again. It's better to do three rapid washes than one very long wash where you completely empty the tank in between washes, but that still isn't going to be as precise as using a stop bath. One additional benefit of using a stop bath is that it will extend the life of your fixer. Both fixer and stop bath are acidic, whereas developer is basic. So if you have residual developer being carried over into your fixer, say if you're not washing things properly, if you don't use a stop bath, that can change the pH of your fixer and cause it to no longer be effective long before the actual hypo or equivalent in the fixer is uh, exhausted. So by using the stop bath after your developer and before you use your fixer, you can prolong the life of your fixer before you have to dispose of it. And we'll talk about that in a future episode. That is a, a doozy. So uh, anything you can do to minimize the frequency at which you have to dispose of fixer uh, is a good thing. As I said already, there are multiple different types of stop bath sold under many different names. But we are talking about Ilfo stop specifically today. 
Ilfo Stop is an odorless stop bath, which means it doesn't contain acetic acid or vinegar essentially as the active component. And that is important. You don't want to stink up your house and it's just less irritating on the nose. And it comes as a concentrate, which is intended to be diluted down into one is to 19, which is your final working solution. This working solution isn't one shot, it is reusable and you can use it for stopping the development of many rolls of film or sheets of paper. The chemical composition of Ilford Ilfo Stop is very simple. There are three different chemicals plus water. Only two of them are listed here, but I'll explain what I mean in a minute. The primary ingredient is citric acid, which is present in about a 10 to 30% concentration, presumably weight per volume. This is of the concentrate, not the working solution. Citric acid is pretty much odorless and it's very safe and economically friendly, which are good for our purposes. Although this is quite concentrated at up to 30% citric acid, it's important to know that there's a difference between a concentrated acid and a strong acid. A strong acid is a very specifically defined thing within chemistry and citric acid is a very weak acid. The second main component is 2-phenoxyethanol, which is just a germicidal preservative, which presumably just prolongs the life of both the concentrate and the working solution. Citric acid is pretty good food for a lot of microorganisms, so this is probably just necessary to stop stuff growing in your stop bath. The third ingredient, which is not listed here, is the pH indicator. And that's probably just because, as we saw in the last video, it's probably just present in such a tiny, tiny amount that it's not legally required to be mentioned. In addition to that, we'll see that the indicator that it does contain is pretty much harmless. The indicator in question is called bromocresol purple, which I found out just by looking up tables of pH versus color for indicators. And what it does is it gives you a very clear indication, hence the name, of when your stop bath stops being effective and the pH is increased so much just by carryover from developer that it is no longer acidic enough to quench further developer and needs to be disposed of. In this case, it starts out at a nice yellow color and turns purple as the pH increases to about five to six. At this point, the Ilfo stop is exhausted and should be disposed of because it's not going to be able to stop development anymore. In this small science experiment, I will be using this freshly prepared 15-ish percent potassium hydroxide solution to neutralize some 1 plus 19 diluted working solution of Ilford Ilfo stop to demonstrate the color change. Potassium hydroxide is actually extremely corrosive and a 15% solution is quite strong. In fact, I shouldn't even be storing it in this glass bottle and I will be disposing of this immediately afterwards to prevent damage to the bottle. I am wearing basic PPE, I'm wearing my gloves, I'm wearing my safety specs, I have a towel just out of the frame and I have a sink just over there in case anything happens. So this is some fresh unused Ilfo stop at 1 plus 19 and we're just going to start adding the potassium hydroxide to see what happens. So as I add it, you can see some small purple drops that slowly fade away. This is quite a lot of solution and this isn't that concentrated, relatively speaking, even though it's a strong solution and a strong base. So look, I am going to have to add quite a bit. I wasn't sure beforehand uh, how the strengths of these would match up, but we'll just squirt a bit in quite aggressively. You can see that purple color disappears because there is a lot of this relative to, you know, a milliliter or so in the dropper. So now I'm just gonna pour a bunch of it in and we'll see the color change. And I'm just gonna set this down here. And you know what, I'll stir it with the dropper. There we go. So look, even though I didn't add quite enough to neutralize all of the stop bath, the color is still persisting even after mixing. And that means it's exhausted, it's done, and that's our color change. There are pretty much no hazards, relatively speaking, associated with this stuff. Ilfo Stop, as the concentrate in particular, does have the potential to cause skin irritation or serious eye irritation, but there is no major toxicity or corrosion. Again, because citric acid, while concentrated in the concentrate, is not a very strong acid. So the level of harm it can cause to you is very low. If you want to read more about the difference between a strong acid and a concentrated acid, I'll put some links to that kind of thing down below in the description. First aid is about as boilerplate as you can get in this case because it's so easy. This is pretty much what you would see at bare minimum on any SDS, so it's really not bad. If someone inhales it, you bring them to fresh air. If they get it on them, you wash it off. 
If they ingest it, you wash out their mouth thoroughly, and in all cases, you seek medical attention. That's what you see on basically any SDS. It just shows how mild this stuff is. Accidental release measures say that you shouldn't pour this down the drain, but again, the SDS refers to the concentrate itself, and as some people would say, dilution is the solution to pollution, and once this stuff is actually diluted down to the working solution, I mean, if you really want to be careful, even if it weren't exhausted, you can throw it down the drain just by throwing some base behind it, like washing soda, maybe. I wouldn't recommend that. But obviously, once you're disposing of exhausted stop bath, which has turned purple, it's no longer acidic. You're talking about citrate salts. That's perfectly fine to put down the drain. PPE is again just boilerplate. I don't think any PPE is really necessary with this unless you have very sensitive skin or some kind of open wound, in which case I would recommend using gloves. Toxicologically, in terms of actual toxicity to you, pretty much nothing. Irritating to skin and eyes, no known toxicity for any of the components. I wouldn't worry about this at all. So in terms of safety, Ilfo Stop gets two out of three. It is pretty innocuous as these things go, but it is a fairly concentrated weak acid solution and that concentrate could potentially cause some harm to you, again, depending on how sensitive your skin is or if you have any open wounds. Next, we're gonna talk about handling. Section seven of the SDS, again, boilerplate. It's very generic. Provide adequate precautions. Don't be stupid with it. Try not to spill it. Try not to get it on you. Store it at room temperature in a sealed container. Basic stuff. In terms of actual stability, especially chemical stability, there's really nothing to say as such. It does say to avoid uh, strong bases, but that's because it's a concentrated acid solution. Again, a weak acid, but nevertheless, a concentrated acid solution. And the neutralization of acids and bases can generate quite a bit of heat, which itself could present some hazards, but it's not like it's going to explode if you mix it with a base. That's literally what we use it for, to quench leftover base from developer. Another important aspect of handling is how long it actually lasts, i.e. the shelf life. Ilford say that an unopened bottle of the concentrate can last up to about five years. And once opened in a full sealed bottle, that is to say you've squeezed it or put something in the bottom to displace that empty headspace at the top of the bottle, you get about a year out of it. However, Ilford do say that the working solution at 1 plus 19 dilution only lasts about seven working days. They do specifically say seven working days, and I'm not sure if that's a week plus two days or if they mean just a lab running for a full week straight open at the weekends but then why not just say a week it's weird i'm not sure say five to eight days that kind of period so the shelf life of the working solution isn't actually that long which is a bit mad compared to the one to five years of the concentrate and i presume that's what the two phenoxyethanol is there for it's to really just help that uh, diluted working solution last a little bit longer this may not actually make it worth it for you unless you're developing film quite frequently, but if you are gathering up large amounts of film and you want to do a few runs over a weekend, that it could easily be worth it. And anything that just screams obvious to you that it's not going to work anymore, is just one less thing you have to worry about and think about. So uh, that's a big win. Then practically speaking, it's not very viscous at all. It's pretty much the same as water which means you don't have to worry about gels or anything like that. It's very easy to pour. Additionally, the neck itself is pretty wide, which makes it easy to pour without worrying about gurgling from air bubbles. The last thing I want to say about handling is something we've already said. You know when it's not working anymore because it changes color. It's as simple as that. There is no questioning it, like with Fixer, where it just kind of stops working, or maybe like a reusable developer where you have to extend your dev time until it just stops working-ish. This will just tell you. It's pretty unequivocal once it's gone bad. For all of these reasons, I'm going to give Ilfostop 3 out of 3 for handling. Not only is it very easy to work with, the working solution itself tells you when it can no longer work by changing color. It's really, really nice and simple and just obvious. Ecologically, there's nothing to mention. None of the components in this are harmful to the environment. Again, there is that chemical aspect that may harm you, your skin, your eyes. But once it gets out into the environment, it's not harmful. It's not going to cause damage to the local water table, 
or aquatic life like fish. It's not anything you need to worry about whatsoever. It even says in section 13 that used, spent or diluted solutions can just go down the drain if your local laws allow it. And we're talking about citrate. You, I mean, you do more damage throwing a can of Pepsi down the sink. They only say if your local laws allow it because they kind of have to assume that somewhere someone doesn't allow it. Or maybe if you have a really, really sensitive septic tank system that doesn't deal well with any change in pH, that might be a concern. But again, spent, exhausted, stop bath, pretty much pH 7 anyway, six at worst. So in terms of disposal, Ilfo Stop gets three out of three. Just pour it down the drain when it's done. That's it. It goes purple. It goes down the drain. Don't think about it. Lastly, we need to talk about cost because it is one of the reasons that someone might choose not to use a stop bath, aside from just the fact it's another step in your development process. A simple one, but maybe you just don't want to. Ilfo Stop costs about 13 euros for a 500 milliliter bottle of the concentrate, which dilutes up to about 10 liters of your working solution. That's enough for somewhere in the region of 120 to 150 rolls of film. So that works out to about nine to 10 cents per roll. I mean, when it's so cheap, I don't really have an excuse not to in future. I, I hadn't worked out how much it was per roll before now, and I just did it in between takes. And uh, yeah, that's cheap, that's economical. So I'm gonna get myself another bottle and Yep, I'm gonna start using this pretty much all the time because why not when it costs so little? In terms of cost then, three out of three. Extremely economical. You can't really argue against it. The laziness argument still stands and I won't judge you for that, but cost, no. Before we get into an actual conclusion and tally up the scores, I do need to give a proper shout out and thanks to the folks at the photoshop.ie who again are the sponsor of this video and this video series. They've provided me with a large number of photographic developers and other film chemicals with which I can make these videos. They're an absolute joy to work with and a joy to shop with and I'm just very appreciative of the fact that they would sponsor these videos to help me get this information out there to hopefully as many people as possible because even people who didn't know that I had this background in chemistry and waste disposal had asked me before how do I dispose of Fixer, for example? I was probably going to make these videos anyway, but with the sponsorship from the Photoshop.ee, I'm able to compress the time frame from years down to months, and I'm sincerely appreciative of that. The Photoshop.ie are extremely price competitive and their catalog is always growing. For example, I recently picked up a roll each of Tmax 100 and Acros 2. Yes, I'm going to do a comparison on those in the future. They expired at the end of 2021, which is fine for ISO 100 black and white film, and the price was heavily discounted as a result. They were somewhere in the region of 950 a roll, which is significantly cheaper than what you're going to pay anywhere else around here. So uh, as always, I highly recommend you check out their catalogue and see if anything tickles your fancy. So in terms of the actual scores, Ilfo Stop gets a 2 for safety, 3 for handling, 3 for disposal, and three for cost, with a total score of 11 out of 12. Honestly, stop bath is not a big deal in terms of safety handling and disposal, so it's kind of understandable that it would get such a high score when you compare it to some of the other things, mainly developers that you could be working with in your photographic development journey. Pretty much any stop bath is going to be nice in that regard, but Ilfo Stop is particularly nice in that it's odorless, being citric acid based, and it has that nice pH indicator to clearly tell you once it's exhausted. Overall, like I said, I'm going to start using it pretty much all the time from now on, and I'm kind of embarrassed that I hadn't worked out how economical it was before. If you don't already use stop bath, it might be worth splitting a bottle with a friend, even if you don't develop that much film, just because it lasts so long and it works so nicely. That's gonna be it for this video. Stay safe and bye bye for now. If you don't already, check out my Instagram page at shaka1277 where I post new pictures every single day. If you like this video and enjoy what I do on the channel, please consider subscribing or checking out my Patreon where the tiers start at just one euro per month.